Hello everyone, Nadim here with PC Solutions Net. Uh, so we've got a, a few questions um, from from users out there after our webinar yesterday. And the main question that's uh, coming up is um, about Passly. Uh, you know, what is this um, single sign-on? What is uh, shared vaults and password managers and and all this stuff? So I'm going to give you a little overview of what Passly is and how it works. Uh, so let me uh, switch over my screen here and so this is Passly. Now I'm logged in as an admin level user so um, I have access to everything. Of course users who are regular users won't see all the stuff over here. They'll see uh, limited like they won't see license manager, SSO manager, only admins will see that. So what it does is uh, just real quick. Uh, the first thing you see here is the launch pad. This is where all your applications show up. So this think of it like your favorite bar, right? So uh, any applications that you want, your administrator can create these applications under um, SSO manager and these applications will appear over here. Now they may be uh, federated applications or they may be without federation. Federated applications will automatically log you into the application, so you don't. It will the system will not ask you or send and receive any password information or credential information from your local machine to the other server. Non-federated means uh, just like uh, uh, regular. You you typing in the URL of a website and it asking your browser for the username and password and then authenticating. So the username and password gets sent from your machine to that server you're logging into. Uh, now I'm going to go a little bit deeper and show you how that experience works. But first, let's uh, check a little bit about the menu called password. So the good thing about Passly is that it has multiple vault options. So uh, not only can a user create uh, multiple vaults, uh, uh, multiple uh, password vaults, but um, also what it allows you to do is have a shared company-wide vault. So like over here we have a vault called PCSN and you see this little, uh, this little um, lock icon on there which means I cannot edit it only the company admins can add or edit stuff or add stuff to that however I can uh, create my own vault and put my stuff in my own vault if I want to which is right here now uh, of course there is the directory manager where you create users there is the password server this is where you will create vaults and you can have multiple shared vaults as well uh, for example you might want to split up vaults by departments works great now the other uh, good thing is the just in time over here so the just in time 2FA means that uh, let's say you have an admin uh, on your office 365 and let's say you have multiple administrators in the company well the problem is if you do 2FA to one of their um, handhelds then only one person gets that text message right so just in time 2FA allows a user to become the admin for a certain amount of time and you can set that policy so you can say uh, for just in time people can um, uh, uh, take access for an account for let's say 30 minutes so what happens is when you when a user logs in um, with the just in time 2fa the text message goes to that user's handheld for that amount of time in this case 30 minutes so for 30 minutes, that user has control over that admin account. Once that time frame passes, another user can take over, another admin can take over and do second factor authentication with their phone. So um, this is something that really helps with uh, admin level users or any kind of shared accounts. Now, another, another way this works great is, for example, your Windows machine. So you might have Windows machines somewhere and, and one day an admin wants to log into a Windows machine uh, with 2FA. Well, that admin can use just-in-time 2FA, log in as that user doing the second factor authentication, do their stuff, and when they log out after 30 minutes or so, whatever time frame is set, the the control gets released back to the user so so from that point onwards the second factor starts going back to the user now of course 
when I say second factory, it's not just a text message to a cell phone or a smartphone. Uh, it is based on an app that people can install on Android, Windows, or um, uh, iOS devices. Uh, so that second factor uh, uh, works great. Now, one of the other things uh, in Auth Manager that you can do is you can, as admin, you can authorize uh, and, and that works with, in Auth Manager and also Policy Manager. You can authorize a certain um, range of IPs or different IP addresses to be trusted IP addresses. Uh, so what that means is if you are, uh, let's say, working from an office, let's say you're a Houston office, so you can give the Houston office public IP address, you can set that as a trusted IP. So when users log in uh, from that IP, the system will not ask them for that second factor. And what it does is it just reduces that login time by a few milliseconds, but it, it makes a difference. So uh, that takes that hassle away for the second factor because those public IPs are automatically trusted. You don't have to use that feature, but it works great. Uh, you can set up different policies in the policy manager. So for example, you can have uh, authentication policy or provisioning for a policy what happens when you provision new users or how do users get authenticated uh, single sign-on manager where you create the apps that show up in your launchpad and license manager of course shows you how many licenses you have and how many you're using so now back to launchpad and let me give you a little demo of how it works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all go into OneDrive for business which is federated so uh, I simply click on that and it authenticates with Passly, see, signing in. So it's automatically signing me in without sending usernames, password, or any of that. And boom, it drops me right into my OneDrive for business. How easy is that? So that's how, and, and I don't know if you if you saw that uh, in the recording, uh, but that's how easy it is. So let me, let me try another one. So let's try Dark Web ID. Uh, well, no, I don't want to try Dark Web ID. Let's try Kaseya. That's a good one. So if I click on Kaseya, it does um, a single sign-on, and boom, it drops me right in there. So, so this is now loading uh, our uh, MSP platform uh, right there. So it works great. Um, it is seamless. Uh, you, you don't need users to manage their favorites and stuff, and you don't need to migrate favorites from one machine to another machine when a user gets a new machine because all this information is kept in the cloud securely with multi-factor authentication. No matter where the user is, all they have to do is log into their Pathway portal and they have access to all this information at their fingertips. Makes life a lot easier, especially if you have shared credentials where uh, I know a lot of businesses uh, use the same, you know, like they might have just one account, but they have multiple users logging in at different times into that one account. So with the shared credentials, you can do that. Um, it, it works great. So that's a quick overview of Passly and how it, it helps your users. It helps you as admins. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, and and uh, you know you might have already uh, you might already know this. I mentioned this in the in the webinar as well yesterday. So this second factor authentication applies to pretty much everything out there, uh, whether it's Office 365, other third party apps or uh, Windows login as well. And that's the kicker, Windows logins. So if you have users logging into remote desktop servers or if you have users logging into their personal machines, their laptops in the field, you can now have second factor authentication to those machines. So the, that one weakest link is now protected. So that's it, guys. Um, uh, everybody have a good day and uh, be safe out there. I will see you hopefully tomorrow.